Pre-charging is mandatory to protect sensitive equipment such as inverters. Often in power electronics, you only get one chance before you do serious damage. My name is Janosch. I've built three custom electric cars. I've driven them through England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland. And I'm going to take you through the pre-charge circuit now. Right, what is a pre-charge circuit? I really hope you're watching this before for you connecting anything and not because you've just lost a bunch of money. Um, we're going to start with a circuit that you remember from school, work our way to why electric cars are different now and how they're different, and we're going to talk about what other components might need pre-charging. So let's go. In school, you remember this circuit, it's got a big battery on the one side, it's got a big connector switch at the top, and it's got a motor on the right hand side. Once you close the switch, um, the motor spins, right? That's what we imagine, that's why it works. Electric cars don't work like that. Why don't they work like that? Because we're chasing efficiency. Three phase motors are much more efficient than DC motors. Therefore, we're using in every modern electric car, we're using a three phase motor. All right, to drive a three phase motor, you need something called an inverter. I've got a little one here in my hand. It's got a big DC minus, a big DC plus, uh, it's got a capacitor bank, and then you've got three phase connectors, U, V, and W typically they're called. Um, we're not going into all of the inverter control, but this is, this is an inverter and this is what it looks like. Capacitors and dogs, what do they have in common? One, I love both of them. Two, both of them take more than what is good for them sometimes. If you give a dog food, some of them will eat more than is good for them till they make themselves sick. What a shame. Capacitors have got the same problem. They take more current from a source than is good for them. It will also burst them. They, there's no protection or anything. They will take more charge than what is good for them. Now, you need to protect them, or the inverter needs to protect them. You need to find out where the pre-charge circuit is the protection. If we look at the diagram from before, the way an electric car is different here is we've got a high voltage minus connector, we've got a high voltage plus connector, and now, additionally, the third one, the pre-charge connector, which is going through a resistor. What you do is you close the negative side first on the high voltage bus, then you close the pre-charge contactor. Um, through the resistor, the capacitors are gradually charged. You then measure the voltage gradually rising on the inverter side. By the way, if it doesn't rise all the way to the top, you know you might have a different problem. You can cancel the pre-charge procedure and give up and don't enable the car. If it rises all the way to the top, you then charge the main contactor, you close the circuit, and now you can start operating the car. Every modern electric car does that. There's other components which might also need protection. If you've got an AC charger on your DC bus, uh, that's essentially, on a very high level, it's a the same as an inverter, but just in a reverse. It's taking AC from the grid and it's turning into DC for your batteries. They typically need some sort of pre-charging as well. If you put an AC charger into a custom car, you need to figure out if it's clever enough to protect itself or if it's your job to protect it. That's essentially what it is. The pre-charge circuit is a circuit to protect the capacitors in an inverter on other devices and that's why it's really important. I really hope you're watching this before you connect something or before you put something together and not because you just lost a bunch of money, in which case my condolences. That's what a pre-charge circuit is. Um, I hope this helped someone and see you around.